Oi. Welcome back to Sucker for Love First Date. Uh, technically speaking, I already recorded a chunk of this, but it, for some reason my mic wasn't working, so everything else is true first reaction. This is, I, I'm just going to back to the start for context. <laughs> and so we're on to chapter two. Ah, this is... The soundtrack for this is very upbeat and happy. I like it. In a world terrorized by slavering shadows and tentacled nightmares, something as innocuous as an additional star in the night sky may be the most prophetic premonition of doom. For wherever the lurid golden light of the planet Carcosa shines, the long, wicked shadow of the king in yellow is cast. Behind that mask lie echoes of decadence and disorder, masquerades of limitless cruelty and hideous laughter in equal part. And of all the poor devils seduced by the lavish promises of the god king's court, the favored victims of the king's sadistic amusement, are followers belonging to other deities. Did I zone out? I was, uh... What was I doing? I don't know, a brain fart. Can't remember for the life of me what I'm supposed to be doing. Everything feels so... hazy. Are they going to work? I am standing outside, after all. Yeah, that's gotta be it. The sun's setting. So it's probably around 7pm, which means I'm gonna be crazy late. Fantastic. That's the beauty of working nights. I can't use the excuse that I ever slept. Yeah, but once I slept all day, sun up to sun down. That's why I'm... Six hours early for my shift? Huh? Those sound like the church's noontime bells. It's high noon? No way, they must be doing some special evening service or something. I can clearly see that it's the golden hour right before sunset. I'll just have to ask someone for the time on my way to work. If it's not too late and I really hoof it... I'll just get chewed out instead of fired. I'll still have to deal with being sweaty, but I'll figure that out when I get there. Oh, someone's coming home. Perfect. Fingers crossed that I'm not absolutely screwed. Hey man, sorry to bother you. You wouldn't happen to have the time on you, would you? Hello? Hey. Uh, hey? Is this guy ignoring me? Normally, I'd say whatever and walk away, but he's uh, unfortunately standing in the only stairway off this floor. My only way to exit this conversation is to shove past him. He's giving me such weird vibes, I don't want to go anywhere near him. The longer I look at him, this guy just seems more and more suspicious. That odd posture. He's slowly swaying in an uncanny, disturbing way. The collar of his shirt looks filthy. Stained with splotches of deep browns and reds. Is he bleeding? Does he even live here? This is the top floor, and I thought I've met all my neighbors. There are only four apartments up here. Hmm. My only choices are to go inside and call the police, or to walk past this freaky guy. I don't have the time to wait around for when the cops show up, so I'll... Just as I take a step, I kick something weighty with my shoe. It's bright pink with gold accents. A book? What's... Nanetta! But I died. The world ended. The shock freezes me in place, and because I was so distracted, I didn't even notice the... I duck inside my room, slamming the door in the suspicious men's face. Fumbling with the locks in a panic, I managed to turn the deadbolt. Take a few fearful steps back into the room, clutching the book to my beating chest. I died. I definitely died when I performed the final ritual. So why am I still here? Where is here? Locked in my room, I have nowhere to run. Nanetta? Nanetta? If Nanetta was here, she could explain this. Maybe there's something in this book that can save me. I need to hurry. 
Come on, come on, Lynetta, where are you? Lynetta, huh? Who is this Lynetta you're trying to call? Let's see. What are you doing in my room? I just so happened to overhear you saying, Lynetta, where are you? You sounded like you were in trouble, so I let myself in. Did you even get in here? Your window was open. No, it's not. And either way, I'm on the top floor, so how did you... Lynetta sounds like a girl's name, right? This Lynetta is obviously the girl you stood me up for, isn't she? What is her deal? I knew she'd be mad if I slammed the door in her face, but not so much that she wouldn't notice any of the things obviously wrong here. Why doesn't she care about those freaky things stalking me outside? Or that my room is full of evil idols and ritualistic tokens? I can explain all this stuff. Let me guess. Accursed devices used to channel eldritch magics and do the bidding of outer gods. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, exactly right. Did you just randomly guess that? Well, I've just been playing coy. I know exactly what you've been doing. You know what this is, don't you? It's a golden version of my book. The book I used to perform ritual... Perform rituals for Lynetta. Hers looks way more ornate than mine. Considering I ended reality with mine, I can't imagine how dangerous hers must be. Wait a minute. This guy, that suspicious man outside, they all match Missy's book. Is she making all this happen? Oh man. When I expected her to do something crazy, I thought she was just gonna show up with a hatchet or something. Missy, look, I'm sorry. I just got wrapped up in something. Please don't. I know all too well, but I also know that these incantations take at least five seconds to pronounce, and that's if she gets it right on the first try. So, worst case, I have five seconds to stop her. If I dash for my ritual knife behind her, I might be able to kill her before she does something terrible to me. If I can distract her, I might be able to buy myself more time. Missy, look, I'll do whatever you want. Name your price. So bold. In that case, I have three commands. Number one, you'll address me as your highness from now on. So when I come home, it's welcome home, your highness. When she comes home, she wants to move in. But that means... Whatever. It's not like I'm going to have to actually follow through on these. At least one of us is about to die. As you wish, your highness. What else? Quit your job so you can spend every waking moment catering to me, your one and only. Sure, whatever. Just a little bit more until I'm in sprinting range of the knife. And number three, you'll obey every order and whim I have, absolutely, without question. Do you agree to my terms? Absolutely. Absolutely. What? Absolutely, your highness. She just handed over her book without a second thought. Yellow energy pulses and crackles from my fingertips. She... she not here to hurt me? Confused. I've liked you for a long time. And you're a capable bookkeeper. Handsome to boot. There's no reason we can't simply work together. After all, a relationship based on threats of violence and fear is no good, right? Right. We narrowly escaped with our lives just now. But something's bothering me. How does she remember that I stood her up in the reality that ended under Lynetta's awakening? And how did she get in through my window? I doubt she was able to climb several stories just like that and then pass through my locked window without breaking it. There's only one possible answer. All right, your highness. I'm ready to enter my lifetime of servitude to you. I just have one small request first. Could you tell me what this is? <laughs> huh? Your Worcestershire sauce? What about it? 
so you're an eldritch god disguised as a human. <laughs> I love the fact that that's just like the go to. Hmm. Yes. If you can, if you could pronounce Worcestershire sauce, you're an eldritch god. That's amazing. Isn't it obvious? No human being can pronounce worse or sh or Worcestershire. Of course not. It's an eldritch loan word. Why else would it be spelled like that? Oh, I was clueless. After all this time I wasted trying to seduce you in this slovenly form. Yeah, you should have tried using your eldritch form instead. I would have fallen in love immediately. What? <laughs> also, I just noticed that eye patch switched sides. Oversight or just using I don't know. I don't know. What? Do you think cosmic entities are attractive? As a human. We'd be are fine. But fourth dimensional girls with non Euclidean geometry are smoking hot. They've got curves I can literally get lost in. <laughs> this line. <laughs> One of the most hilarious lines I've ever read. <laughs> if I had known that you're attracted to my cosmic godhood, I would have just led with that. Please allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Esther, King in Yellow, Ace the Carcosa, Talent, I'm sure. She's gorgeous, a bona fide Eldritch King in my room. Oh man, all my fantasies of smooching and eldritch horror are coming true. An eldritch royalty to boot. The King in Yellow. Sounds familiar. Can't remember why. My memory of my other existence is kind of fuzzy. What I do remember is that her followers tend to be incredibly violent towards cultists loyal to other gods. Like Lynetta. Shh. <sighs> kind of got swept up in the moment and almost forgot I had already pledged fealty to a different one. This reality or not. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm already involved with another god. I, I, I'm following Veneta. I know, so loyal, so faithful and devoted. That's why I want you to be my follower instead. In exchange for serving me, I shall grant you anything you desire. Well, power. Whatever that rotten witch Lynetta offered you, I can double it. She promised me a smooch. <laughs> you handed over your reality to her? For a singular smooch? Are you mad? You heard me. So you'll match her offer then? I... I suppose... If that's all you're selling the world for, then a smooch... Can be... Uh, arranged. <laughs> no way. You promised to double it. That's two smooches. <laughs> Two of them, on the lips. Usually, my followers ask for inordinate wealth, unquestionable fame and influence, or some lavish indulgence. I don't know why that happened. Nobody's ever dared to ask the... Yeah. She's blushing for real. Suffice it to say, I'll expect you to perform your scenes flawlessly in exchange. Scenes? The prompt book I gave you contains the script for the King in Yellow. Huh? You mean this spell book that I was so afraid of is just a play? This thing's just a playbook? Or all the power invoking rituals? Rituals? Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? You know, for being an eldritch abomination, an outer god, from beyond the stars, she sure, she sure seems up to date on meme culture. <laughs> well, I don't know, not necessarily know about up to date, but she's, she's definitely aware of it. <laughs> no, we aren't barbaric swamp folk casting hocus pocus in a cave. We have a little class. To invoke my power, my play must be performed perfectly. Perfectly? I don't always get these ritual uh, scenes right the first time. What happens if I botch my lines or set a scene wrong? Your performance will receive a scathing review in the Carcosin Times publication. And you'll also be praised. I love how 
the scathing review is considered to be way worse. I'm getting those swooshes no matter what. Hey, Esther? Don't do that. What? All I did was say hello. Don't speak my name, dearest. There's a reason I am she who is not to be named. A mortal saying Esther summons me to them. If I can't say your name, what am I supposed to call you? You have many options. You may call me your majesty, your grace, my king. You could even call me your royal highness if you're feeling particularly subservient. Esther, Esther, Esther. Stop that! <laughs> what is it now? I was just thinking, you know how saying your name summons you? Yes, what of it? There's an old myth that saying Bloody Mary in the mirror three times at midnight summons an angry demon to your room. Does it work? It summoned my neighbor telling me to shut up and go to bed, so sort of. <laughs> oh, wow, there was more. I actually didn't realize that. You read my mind. I was just wondering. What do you mean? Well, you can only be wherever the light is. Does that make you a bunch of light particles or something? Not just any light. The light of planet star Carcosa, which moves and shines to my will. If Carcosa was destroyed, I would cease to be. The same would happen if the light went out or was permanently blocked. So in a way, I am the bewitching goddess you see before you, the planet Carcosa and its light. So that makes you a person, place, and thing. I suppose, yes. Well, I know what I'm picking next time I play 20 questions. <laughs> oh, now that is... That is big brain. That is, that is insanely big brained. Okay. Exterior and view of city. Greetings, stranger, fortuned fellow. Tis a party for which I bellow. I invite the king in yellow, so come all ye in ye till. Wear thine masks upon you to my masquerade until he may come to lost ye till. Hope for us there may be still. Tittles length and dim streets darken to the curfew thou must park, and why so loudly does thou bark in the dim city of ye till? Much attention, quite unwholesome, you'll instill from the souls of poor you till. Why attract so much ill will? That is just what I must seek, see, hidden somewhere amongst the meekly. Tis one invitee I seek, he shall all my mistakes undo. Tis the king in yellow whose great wealth I shall accrue when his shadow passes through. Wealth will come to I and you. Lo, your plans shall surely languish, and this whole town will know anguish for the king is whom they say, which shall this city indeed smite. If he comes, you till and you and I will know his might. I'll be lost within a night. His reward is worth that price. Wearing this expensive clothing, pardon from my family's loathing, lasting till I'm decomposing all my friends whom strife I've caused. Yes, preparing for this night, their forgiveness is the cause. They shall all be proud because I had brought the king to us. Why, well, thank you. That was actually pretty fun. I haven't, had, I haven't gone to flex my acting chops since high school. You're no stranger to the stage, I can tell. Yeah, I was a theater kid. My school did Macbeth. A virtuoso of the bard, are we? If you've performed Shakespeare, then you must be an actor of sufficient ability to serve. 
survive my play. Tell me, what role were you? The leading man, I presume. I was tree number four. I wasn't aware that was a role. It's not. You weren't even the leading tree. <laughs> Don't worry. I was actually Macbeth. I thought you said you were a tree. Acting. Oh, hey, what's happened? Don't fret, dearest. Something is simply passing between my planet's light and your bedroom. A cloud, perhaps. You know the proverb, wherever the golden light of Carcosa shines, the shadow of the unspeakable one is cast? It's a literal rule. I can only be wherever the light of my planet star Carcosa shines. In other words, I can't reach you at night, when you're not standing in natural light, or if anything obstructs your view of Carcosa. That explains why Missy had such a weird daytime curfew. She literally vanished when the sun sets. What a Cinderella-like curse. That also explains how she got in my room. My window must have been locked, but the curtains were open, allowing the light in. So she can't get into my room if I close the curtains? Aww, I was quite enjoying my time with you. I needed to stay a little longer. Alas, parting is such sweet sorrow. It may be some time until your sky clears. Until then... Bid you adieu. Well, it looks like I have one hell of a choice to make. Benita hasn't been summoned yet, and Esther is stuck outside for the moment, so I have a moment to collect my thoughts. Between Benita and Esther, who do I want to smooch? Or maybe more accurately, who am I more afraid of? Do I stay with Benita, or do I follow Esther this time around? She is offering twice as many smooches after all. I need to make my choice. If I want to stay with Lynetta, then I should focus on casting spells from her book. If I want to smooch Esther, then I should open my window again when the clouds clear and use Esther's book. And if I try going for both, well, walking down the middle of the road is bound to get me run over. As long as they are both in the same room at the same time, I should be safe. I? Oh man, what am I gonna do? Either way, I need to talk to Lynetta. She might be an avatar of World Ending Calamity, but she might be able to help me get my head straight. Speaking of my head, why did my forehead feel kind of sticky? Yep. I'm just gonna play it safe here. Alright. Draw the curtains. Make sure my lights are off. Red fire candles. Ah, yes, and the ritual necklace. The Neta of Artul Mgab Kadish to Nildri. Mortal, for what purpose have you? Darling, it's you! <laughs> hey, Lynetta. Nice to see her, despite everything I've been through so far. So, so far? Despite everything I've been through so far. Sure, she may have ended the reality I was from, but she never lied or deceived me. She told me I'm from what would happen, and I did it willingly. That said, I'm... Oh, yeah, I'm really glad you're here, but... Can you tell me what happened to me, to that world we were in? Just as I thought, only... And why am I still here? Why did I survive when the rest of that reality didn't? Oh, darling, don't make me say it. It's embarrassing. You're still here because I'm... I'm still dreaming about you. Everything in existence is being dreamed about by at least one Eldritch God. So as long as you're on my mind, you'll exist somewhere. That's actually kind of sweet, in a terrifying cosmic way. What would happen if all of them stopped dreaming at the same time? What if you all woke up at once? Everything, including all of the gods, would cease to be. And that can just happen at any time? Nah, don't worry. There's about 50 of us total, so the chances of all of us being awake at the same time are low. There's only like 50 of you in all? She probably knows Esther very closely. Mm -hmm. Part of a big family, huh? 
family. Do you happen to know Esther? Darling, I thought I told you not to mention other women while we're together. Especially not my sister. S sister? Uh, don't uh, have a great relationship with her? Absolutely not. We've been fighting over planets and followers for eons. It wouldn't be a stretch to call us nemeses. <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner must be real awkward. <laughs> Ooh, good thing I washed my face. Maybe we'll anything jumping out there. If Lynette had saw that lipstick smear on my forehead, I would be in hot water right about now. Oh, I still am in hot water now, actually. I've gotten involved with her sister. A messy affair is bad enough, but with a family member? I'm toast if she finds out. Esther. Looks like the clouds haven't cleared yet. I won't be able to see her right now if I wanted to. For now, I should work through Lynetta's spells again. Eldritch Hand saved my ass last time. I better cast that one in case I'm unable to talk again. Sheesh, listen to myself. What's wrong with me, man? I don't know. I'm playing this game. I don't know what's wrong with me. Darling, what's this I found under your bed? Oh, that's my Eldritch Encyclopedia. Excuse me. Oh, that's my Eldritch Encyclopedia. I haven't translated yet, but the diagrams are useful. Oh, you studied it extensively then. I sense I've made some sort of mistake. I guess? Why? What's up? I I actually thought it was an anatomical guidebook. Slippery Shogoth Girlfriends Volume 3? I bet you can learn a lot of anatomy from this perv. I said I haven't translated yet. How was I supposed to know? This girl on the front isn't wearing anything. She's topless. That's a girl? It just looks like an amorphous mass of tentacles to me. Is this what you wish I look like? I really truly don't, trust me. Look, Lenata. You're smoking hot. I could never have eyes for anyone else when I'm with you. You're my dream girl. I seriously did not know it was a dirty Mac. Honest. It's okay. I forgive you. That's it. Can I keep it? <laughs> of course not. Hey, out of curiosity, have you dated before? I have too. I'm mostly wondering what kind of guys you're into. A billion years old. I, I think my humans. What kind of humans? Uh, let's just say you're the nicest guy I've dated by far. Oh boy. Sheesh. Were they really that bad? Well, my last human ex hit me with a boat. So the bar is low. <laughs> okay, that was a. That was a. That was a, that was a. That was a nice. That was a nice little shout out to Cthulhu. To the call of Cthulhu. You dated non-humans too, huh? Got any fun stories? How'd that end? No. In hindsight, I shouldn't have been surprised that a sentient mass of eyeballs was seeing other women. Yeah, kind of hard not to see things when you're a bunch of eyeballs. Like, I, I see, the, I see the wordplay there. Is it even really wordplay? I see the joke. That, that was pretty good. <laughs> okay, and that's all she had to talk about. All right. I'm take oh I gotta go back to get the amulet off. Okay, your gipog stocky ugh Still as unnerving as I remember. In this reality, this is just my hand now. Forever. Ah, it's such a nice day outside. It's a little dry for my liking, but we could totally have a date date. Why don't you open your window? Let oh no. No, wait. What? What is it? Uh, you sure you want to do that? What do you mean? I mean, uh, don't you want to try first before you go out like last time? Uh -huh. That's a tad salty. I'm so sorry, darling. I'll be right back. No peeking, but I love you. 
That was a close one. If she opened that window, Esther would have come. I would have been a goner. Click the plaza cleared and the Luneta's out of the room. If I want to go for Esther, it's my go time. Otherwise, if I want to stay with Luneta, I need to make sure that window never opens, ever. Time to choose. From this point on, okay, but my what actions if I perform have consequences. This before Masquerade, like, well, no, that probably won't, no, that won't work because Mask gets, uh, because, yeah, because your head slot gets taken up completely. A thing is just your imagination. <laughs> and it looks like, yeah, this is definitely where things begin to get janky, I think. You know what? I started with Lynetta. I'm going to stick to Lynetta. As you know, you know, at the same time, I'm really enjoying Esther's hilariousness. Like the sheer amount of flustering. Plus the uh the play is a lot more fun than trying to do those. Holy janky incantations. Uh, yeah. All right. So what do I need? Elegant robes. All right, mask, robes, knife. All right, looks like everything's in place. Feel all gussied up. Even for me, this outfit's pretty loud. Even so, the beauty of this whole ensemble is just out of this world. Veneta is trying. I better meet with Esther in the other room. All I have to do is stand where the planet's light can reach me and... I know what you're going to say, your highness. Yellow's more your color than mine, but I still look pretty good, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm dreading I'm dreading what comes I, I, I at this point having both of them summoned at the same time everything from here on forward is pure dread it's a pretty snug fit the mask feels almost alive like it's molding to fit my face perfectly you have a twist of metal digging into my temples it's stuck to my face somehow. Ow. Ow. It really won't come off. <laughs> I may have failed to mention that we reenact the play with deadly accuracy. From this point on in the play, your character never removes his mask. So neither shall you. This surely shouldn't be a problem for someone who is planning to be my eternal servant. But... I can't even blink anymore. My eyelids are stretched to meet the indefinite metal of the eye holes. Oh, we, we we got a little bit of we got a little bit of doc going on here, huh? The mask in your face has become one. Your every pore is now gilt in gold. You know, you know, I'm having some regrets. I'm having some second thoughts. This is what? Do I have to wear this to work? When I see family? When I see the Nana? Wait a minute. Those strange people outside. They don't have masks stuck to them, too. Are they past followers who became Esther's servants? Is that going to be my fate? Do I want to do... Do I, do I want to... Do I want to deal with these consequences now? Do I do this or do I go for consequences? JPEG? Hmm. All right. Yep. 
just making that as well as I can. Hey, Esther. Ah! Do that. What? All I did was say hello. Don't speak my name, dearest. There's a reason I am she who is not to be named. A mortal saying Esther summons me to them. If I can't say your name, what am I supposed to call you? You have many options. You may call me your majesty, your grace, my king. Or... <laughs> you could even call me your royal highness if you're feeling particularly subservient. Esther, Esther, Esther. <laughs> Stop that! Oh, that's... that's adorable. Welcome, company much cherished. May my loneliness thus pair. Uh. All right, all right. Ah, all right, all right, all right. Y you know what? Oh, brother. Oh, brother. All right. All right, you know what? You know what? Now I'm curious. All right, mask, robe. Yep, all right. I am now curious about the consequences. I'm scared. Robe, uh, ceremonial knife. Oh, yep. Oh, oh, this is going to be a really weird ending. Oh. Oh. Whoa. No light. Oh. Oh, I'm an idiot. Right. <laughs> All right. Up. Obstacle. Oh, my. Bruh. Game over. All right. She's finished with. She's finished. Uh, yeah, just working on my pronunciation. Oh, are you? No, 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 I got it. I got it. I'm a big boy. Oh, yeah, it can't be harder to figure out than English. It would probably be easier to read if. Oh, that explains why I can read it. <laughs> My eyesight has been going for a while. I gotta pick up some prescription reading glasses, but I keep putting it off. <laughs> I uh, usually wear contacts. But... I guess not. I must have dropped them on the ground somewhere in my last reality. Darling, put the book down. Oh, I have. You know what? Yeah, let's, let's just see how this ending goes. That's it. I'm dead. That door hole, no telling. Okay.
Oof. Picking off large chunks of flesh with every pull. This pain is unreal. It's do or die. Why did you lock me out? Heaven's rules. I... Is, is that why you were hiding your face? No. Maybe. I don't care about any of that. I'm not so shallow that I'd fuss over what you look like. I'm here because I like you. No matter what happens to you. So don't be so self-conscious around me, okay? Renata? Just let me hold you. She's too sweet. This feeling right now almost makes tearing my face off worth it. Almost. Just stay right there until you're mentally prepared to continue. Yeah. I end up blacking out from the pain, waking up some time later. Bone mask nowhere to be found. Okay. Fair enough. Whoa. There are so many ads. Yes, darling. I'm just checking, but you haven't tampered with the book, right? What do you mean? This Eldritch Embrace spell it looks a bit different from the other rituals. <laughs> How strange! Oh, what's the use? You caught me. It's not a real ritual. I just. See how hard you're pushing yourself to make it through these spells for my sake. I thought maybe you could use a break from the real rituals, so I could spoil you a little. Oh, that's actually pretty sweet of you. But there's no time for breaks. Not even a quick one. I can't lose sight of my singular goal. <laughs> you leaving? Something I need to check on. It's probably nothing, but you haven't seen anything strange lately, have you? I've seen plenty of strange things lately. Outer gods, hands with mouths. I meant things beyond the usual strangeness. You haven't noticed anything watching you, have you? Huh. Sorry, I guess I'm being the strange one, huh? I'll just be right back. Alright, what happens if I do... Oh, no, I'm not gonna do that too. So, why is that a purple broken one? I have no idea. All right, guess I'm on the Lynetta path now, because there's just no reason not to. I mean, I tore off my face, so. Oh, wait. Oh, there's... where's the offering? Offering. <laughs> it's very spooky. <laughs> That's, that's, that's adorable. All right. Let the room be well lit. Or nothing terribly janky. Uh. I, uh... I guess the turtle was the offering here because I don't. Okay, yeah, metamorphosis. Okay. I, I guess this is the offering. What? Need ingredients. Uh, uh, oh, right there. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> as long as we keep finding each other, yeah, that's probably not gonna be a problem with the way things seem to be going. I'd like that. Remember the last time we did this? When you couldn't speak back to me? I do remember. So you know what happens next, right? One last ritual, and then we say goodbye again. As always, take as much time as you need. I'll wait as long as it takes, darling. Ooh, ooh, waking up could be so exhausting. Sounds like you need caffeine. You're gonna take a nap before you oh end everything? You know me so well. <laughs> but don't try anything while I'm sleeping this time. I know what you did. Don't look so surprised. Right before our date would have ended, you betrayed me. Don't think that there aren't consequences between realities, darling. I've already dealt with that pesky breakup spell in your book. Uh, yeah, I noticed. So just take the straight and narrow path of loyalty in front of you. We can keep doing this forever and ever <laughs> and ever. Hmm. Could you hit the lights for me again, darling? I mean, there's no way we can actually do stage two here. Like, I've botched the makeup. So yeah, just, just nice and simple. Uh, grab a knife. It ain't off our turn. Yep. Yeah, I, I. Wait, what? We need to talk. I, I wanted to apologize for being so nasty to you earlier. Uh, elaborate. Strangely, I was still clinging to you selfishly because I was so, so mad at you. I just wanted to have the best prom work for a happy future together. So I thought I could scare you straight. But now I know that's not possible. Not here. Not now. Uh... You're just not the same person that ended reality for me so long ago. So let's break up. Meta, I'm sorry. There's no need to end this reality just so we can have an unhealthy, failing relationship. So, I'll go back to sleep before billions die for my sake. But where do we go from here? What's left after today? Tomorrow, silly. Taking the book with you, too? I'm just giving it back to Mel. It's not like I'll have a need for it. Hopefully this book never finds its way back to your world. For your sake, and mine. I'll handle the book, but if you survive, could you throw out the rest of these summoning artifacts? It's no good to keep things that remind you of me, you know? I'm... sorry. It's a beautiful day outside. You should open the window. Maybe let in some light. Uh... Uh... Yeah, that's, that's that's some real nice synchronization between subtitles. Maybe this was a chance for us. In reality, far from this one. But the best I can do in this one is spare you. You're not gonna kill me? No, I am going to kill you. To spare you from the slow, agonizing end. I'm sparing you the pain of being alive when the fog lifts and reality sets in. So you won't have to live to see the consequences of the spells you've already completed. At least this way. You won't feel a thing. Goodbye, darling. It was fun. Till we meet again. Alright. Clever. Alright. That was a... Surprisingly heartfelt ending. I wonder how much of that had to do with, uh... 
the fact that I did the yeah. Yeah, that's probably why. Although the weird Is that the worth it end again? Meet it wait, there are three endings there? Oh my one of six true endings. Oh no. This one I'm pretty sure is just the uh, worth it end again. Still <laughs> worth. <laughs> all right, all right. And I'm gonna guess, yep. Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on into the masquerade. All right. All right. Host wearing robes and mask. All right. Interior, well lit. Let's. All right. Let's see here. Welcome, company much cherished. May my loneliness thus perish. To this evening we shall share, which would be wasted by myself. No attendants have arrived tonight, alas, besides thyself, but I'll be beside myself when the king reveals himself. Lay thine hands upon my bodice, for before you stands a goddess. Know this guest of golden rod is merely the first of the night. Let us drink to your great wealth and family and life, laughing till your afterlife all be yours once he arrives. Yes, until my schemes may flourish, we shall haunt my empty fortress. Let us dance a whirling dervish while we feed our appetites. By the morrow we shall know if the king came tonight. Midnight marks the final chime. Until that comes, there is still time. I really should have asked before we got to the final act. But this play isn't a tragedy, right? No, it's not. The ending is actually quite hilarious. Oh, that's actually a huge relief. What happens? I'm just saying this right now. It's probably going to be a human tragedy because... <laughs> I mean... This is an uh, Eldritch Abomination. Who also just is extremely arrogant and... Yeah, probably incredibly detached. Your character is slain and all of his wishes come true in an unexpected way. In his ambitions of greed, influence, and fame, he dies penniless, alone, and infamous. Wait, my character dies? I'm gonna die? <laughs> I thought you said it was a comedy. Tragedy from far enough away, dearest. <laughs> Is she implying that she thinks my death would be funny? I get that she's an Adonon, so human morals don't really apply to her. But that's gotta be cruel, even for her. Even by their standards. No way I can go through with that. Sorry, don't want to die again. I anticipated that you might get cold feet after learning of your character's fate. However, my wrath is terror far beyond a touch of stage fright. So, for your sake, dearest, hear the f***ing scene. <laughs> Do not make a mistake, all right. Okay, that's blue. That's the same as uh That's the same as the secret page in the first episode.
Aborna Aloy Gehi Ayog Vukola. The room is filled with the mouth-watering aroma of perfectly seasoned meat and fresh fruit. There must be a magical component involved here, because I see no less than three of my favorite dishes. Esther is strutting towards my bed. Surely you don't intend to merely watch me eat, yes? Didn't think she was actually going to let me have any. Don't mind if I do. What was that? I like groans of murderous anger from outside the door. Was that from the masked stalkers outside? If they've all got masks on their faces, they must be Esther's followers, or even ex-partners. And their groans were of jealousy? Makes sense. They've been locked outside all this time. But they'd kill for the chance to spend any time with Esther. Just a moment, dearest. What is the threat count of your silken sheets? At least 1,000, I presume. Silk? My blankets are cotton. So picky. If she's that uppity, maybe I'll start with the grapes. Something that'll feed her princess complex. I'm glad. <laughs> of course not. You're hiding this cream puff. Right? Would you like me to keep your bike? Mmm, delicious. So good. <laughs> I think that good. Let me try. Oh, you want a bite? <laughs> well, if you don't want it, then I guess I can have some. Man, it's really delicious. Nothing tastes better than food with a twist of eldritch magics. It's a shame you don't want any of it. <laughs> What's it gonna be? Watch me eat your favorite dessert or supper and hinder it. <laughs> what was that? Very well, my king. The other half. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just too busy laughing. This is this is hilarious to me. <laughs> She's cute when she drops her sadistic front. I do more, but I feel those husks starring jealous daggers in my back. I'll tear my head off if I let this go on. Shouldn't we save some of this for the play? It'll hurt the performance if we eat the entire set, won't it? I suppose. Very well. Let us resume the play. Wait, what's this? Wait. Okay. I just I just looked through and I noticed that. Oh. Whoa. Oh, okay. Okay. Boost expires. Last verse kills audience. <laughs> Oh no. Alright. Enter's wearing robes and mask. Okay. I'm just doing this because the first line gets repeated anyway. Damn the night and morrow scornful, wicked morning unremorseful. Why tonight must I be mournful for ambitions unfulfilled? After all my preparations, all the daylights I have killed, why is it us only still? Oh, why are my wishes unfulfilled? Oh, why so livid if your actions have permitted this result truly befitted to a hunger such as thine? Though your greed is grave and tomb encrypt in 
which you die, it's within your grief you fry. To this post, the end is nigh. Wretched guest, you've come to mock me. For bemusement thou wast hawking, and so in town you stalked me to watch my schemes fall apart. Strip the... Strip thy mask, apologize, then hastily depart. Leave thee just my broken heart, leave naught else in whole or part. Draw thy blade from mine contusion. My life reaches its conclusion. Cruelty matched by your delusion that you truly are the king. Yes, you would have granted all my wishes not forsaken me if indeed you were the king. Why would you have murdered me? Granted all your wishes, I'm afraid I disagree. All alone you are with all of your remaining family. And as vision turns to darkness, you have claim to all you see. Wear that mask and robe for the rest of all your life indeed. And the strong will fall to illness, haunt you too with pitiless stillness, and none left alive to witness my ascension to you till. And from the catacombs shall spill the cries of innocence laid still. We heard from Lady and from Smithy and from Throne to Peasant Mill. Cries unprecedented in the history of you till. Wails unlike they'll ever be again in dark you till. Invitations shrill brought the king to black your tail. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> You're all too kind. Listen to that applause, dearest. The euphoria of a flawless recitation. Innumerable voices make up cacophony of cheering outside my door. Fanatical revelry, screams of terror, and sadistic amusement, all amidst thunderous applause. The king has come. Smiles, dearest, smiles! Aren't you proud of yourself? I... I didn't use a stage knife. I'm really bleeding out here. My abdomen is unseamed. Okay, that's that's a new one. I like that. To ensure you stay in character, call it method acting, if you will. Oh, with sweet sorrow, the curtain falls, and the show begins. The stage is now set for you to inscribe the yellow sign. Do this, and I will bestow upon you the smooch I promised. You mean the smooch is you promised? Floral, you said you'd give me two. That's really all you can think about? Your world is about to be enslaved by a horror from beyond the stars. You're dying from a stab wound, and you're worried about smooches? You are... an interesting human. It is a pity that you'll soon cast away your individuality for me. Oh, we finally have use for black fire. All right. Oh, actually, hold on. Before I do that. Okay.
Uh, this will allow otherworldly images to reveal themselves. Behold, the yellow sign. Become my slave, my eternal captive audience. I am entropy. Disorder. Where things are built tall, I appear to knock them down. Monuments, nations, relationships. Some of these husks have wedding rings on their fingers. I steal the hearts and minds of the rich or powerful to break them and litter my court with them like gold dust. Why me? I'm broke. I am the breeze of chaos that knocks down any tower that challenges the grandness of my court. Your relationship with my sister was one of those things. Before, I only pursued you because you have a great deal of clout amongst the Nycolin crowd and shrewd wealthy types. You would have been an incredibly powerful servant who would have been able to draw in countless wayward souls that meet my standards. At least, until that reality ended and you undid all of my hard work. All of my followers that I had stolen from Lynetta formed in an instant. I had no choice but to abandon that reality. There's nothing left to destroy if nothing exists, you see. But in this reality, I've stolen away her most powerful asset. You. Just as I've stolen every member of my entourage. All the husks, they're bleeding from their chest onto their elegant robes. Just like me. All these people. Why? No, I mean, why are they still here? Aren't they kind of third wheeling our moment here? <laughs> even, even in the most desperate moments. Such a defiant tone. Why aren't you under the effects of the yellow sign? Were you unaffected? Did, did the spell fail? I don't feel any different. I'm predicting the next line is going to be something in the vein of, but I already am. <laughs> ah, I already was since I first saw you. That's why your little spell didn't work. <laughs> you can try and resist it all you want, but one way or another, you're my eternal slave from now on. Are you proposing to me? <laughs> I accept. No, dearest, I'm not talking about marriage. What I'm talking about is catering to my every whim, anticipating my every desire, and living fully to please me. Yeah, that just sounds like marriage. No, I'm talking about a servitude where you do nothing but kiss the ground I walk on and revere me for all of time. A servitude unlike anything on earth, where you never so much as think of anyone else. No, we have that on Earth, and it's called marriage. It's different! <laughs> it's not? How so? No freedom. Forever. You are only permitted to do as I say. Yep. And it means preparing every single one of my meals for me, whenever I so wish. Yeah, for sure. Until death to a part, even? Exactly. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, but you're literally just describing being married. I mean, hey, if that's what you want, then I'm in. Let's get married. preferred you from the beginning. I already broke up with Lynetta in the other reality, actually. Why are you being so persistent? You can't really want to marry me that badly. You're just trying to act all smooth, so I give you your second suit. Save it for our wedding day. Uh, you can't be serious. Right? <laughs> what serious king and white? <laughs> that is a, the, 
that is that is amazing. That is. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, blah, gotta get. Yep. Yeah. I. Important to take your diet seriously. You should be more careful when your health is on the line. I remember that. This much food. It's surprising that you were able to eat it alone. I may not look it, uh, but I'm a big eater, especially with sweets. You are so interesting, darling. I'm learning something new about you every day. I can't tell if she's on to me or if she's in denial. But I sense I'm in trouble. It just can't be helped if you got a sweet tooth. Do you want me to feed you the last of it? Uh, the leftovers? I'm good. It's no good to waste food, darling. No, you're right. I should watch my diet more carefully. If you've already eaten the poison, you may as well lick the plate, as they say. I'm full. Make room in your dessert stomach. She's merciless. Say ah. Oh. Huh? I wonder if this isn't the food that you like. It sounds like. You're saying this was for someone else, but that can't be right. After all, my darling wouldn't secretly be hosting communion with other gods behind my back. Right, darling? Those are dangerous eyes. I've got my back against the wall here. Even if she knows, I have to keep up appearances here, or she'll drag me to oblivion without a second thought. I reluctantly unclench my teeth and open my mouth. A juice-soaked morsel from the leftovers is shoveled into my mouth. It feels gritty with an unusual texture, like it's covered in thousands of small hairs. It tastes strangely. I can't even begin to guess what food this used to be. I try to gulp it down before I can taste it, but it's too big to swallow whole. If I just bite it in half once and swallow the pieces, I might get it down before I gag. As I bite down, it bursts like a tomato, filling my mouth with a sweet juice. Okay, seriously, this, this, this music is big Doki Doki vibes. It tastes extremely fruity, sort of pineapple-y even. That is... That is good. It's better than good. It's great. It's godlike nectar. Nectar? Nectar. <laughs> Instantly addictive ambrosia. More. I need more. It's too delicious to just have one bite. Seriously, it's like nothing else. As soon as I swallow, I feel the immediate effects of withdrawal. My fond memories of any other food fade to, other, to utter disgust. The mere thought of eating anything else makes my stomach churn. I immediately take another bite, filling my mouth with as much as I can. The smooth nectar bursting from every bite swims around in my mouth, coating every surface. It's so delicious that it's making my mouth tingle. Huh? I just bite my cheek. Why do I taste blood? The dull tingling suddenly turns into a sharp sting. Even an unbearable burning. My whole mouth feels raw, like I'm gargling acid. It's like my mouth is being digested. I lurch to spit it out, but my willpower fails me. I just can't bear to spit it out. It's too good. Just a little while longer. Let me chew it just a little while longer. The food falls out of my mouth with a splat as a heap of bloody viscera. It might be in my imagination, but I swear I spat out twice as much as I put it in there. The horror. Good boy. You know how much I love to spoil you. Do you remember the last time we did this? The 
Veneta takes a book from my hands. Need to talk. I... I wanted to apologize for being so nasty to you earlier. Truth is, even though I knew you were acting strangely, I was still clinging to you selfishly because I just wanted to have the best prom and work for a happy future together. But now, you're just not the same person that ended reality for me so long ago. So, let's break up. Veneta, I'm sorry. There's no need to end this reality just so we can have an unhealthy, failing relationship. So, I'll go back to sleep. Before billions die, for my sake. But where do we go from here? Tomorrow, silly. Taking the book with you too? I'm just giving it back to Mo. It's not like I'll have a need for it. Hopefully this book never finds its way back to your world. For your sake, for mine. I'll handle the book, but if you survive, could you throw out the rest of these summoning artifacts? It's no... I'm sorry. Beautiful day outside. You should open the window. Take care. Okay. I don't think I've actually done a uh, pure one here. You know, let's go. Let's go and see what happens with a pure Lanetta run here. What is it? What if... What if... We didn't complete the final ritual? What if I stayed to sleep longer? So we could have a little more time together? Just you... And me... Lingering in a doomed world, alone. Like an endless dream come true. Doesn't that sound nice? That sound nice. Um... Anga ya lineta. Wait, no! We were finally going to be together forever! We would have been so happy! Uh, this reality is doomed. You said it once. The dream has to end eventually. You keep a dream going on forever. It has to become a nightmare eventually. Or worse, it becomes reality. Take a look at the world around us. Take a good look at me. Is this what you want our reality to be like? Of course not. But I thought my dream of being with you forever. It never come true. But we can be together for a short time forever. But I'm not ready to say goodbye again. Why can't we just stay for good? Why can our time together only be brief meetings and long farewells? What if we're saying goodbye forever? If I'm your dream guy, then there's no way this is goodbye forever. It's a big deal. You can always dream of me again. Darling, please don't go. I can stay asleep a little longer. I can. Give me back. Giving me a dream wonderful enough to remember clearly. <laughs> what? Why, why did that actually kind of hit in the feels, though? Why, why did that actually hit the feels? <laughs>
doing? You were seriously planning on serving this to me? Hey, I can explain. I have nothing. Here, heavy chains dragging nearby. I just got hungry. I skipped breakfast this morning, so. An entire feast on your own because you were feeling better. So, the person you. Such stuff. Conveniently, the punishment for blasphemy and treason is the same. Death. <sighs> what a shame. I thought you had some potential, but. Be serious. I'm seriously gonna die here. Wait, wait, what if I did something to appease you? Then would my crime be forgiven? I am God King. All is as I say. If I wish for you to be pardoned, then it shall be so. Huh? <laughs> Perhaps if you grovel on your hands and knees, I can let you off lightly. I immediately drop into a full frustration bow. Please forgive me. Let me make things up to you. I beg you. A lowly worm, forgive me, but don't let me uh, without harsh punishment first. You. Don't you think you said that too willingly? <laughs> <laughs> this game. You're not enjoying this, right? No. Yes. Oh, you want a bite? Even though my lips are touched. Uh, seems like we've got another bug here. Right. Don't drop a, single morsel. a juice soaked morsel from the leftovers is shoveled into my mouth. Feels gritty with an unusual texture, like it's covered in the. Is this literally the same thing? Dearest, the next act is a Here, no light except an open window. Behold the yellow sign. Become my slave, my eternal captive audience. Tell me, dearest, your devotion to me faltered today, did it not? I cannot fathom how someone as common as my sister could have led you astray. Oh, alas, this is a problem of the past. As you are now the fully devoted servant that I see fit to invite to my court. All the husks, they're bleeding from their chests onto their elegant robes. Just like me. All these people. Why? Why? You're acting like you're staring at pure evil. I do not kill or maim humans personally, nor do I cause the reality-ending maelstrom your ex-girlfriend does. I do this because it's what I live for. It's what I am. 
I am entropy. Disorder. Where things are built tall, I appear to knock them down. Monuments, nations, relationships. These husks have wedding rings on their fingers. I steal the hearts and minds of the rich or powerful to break them and litter my court with them like gold sacks. But why me of all people? I'm broke. Because I am the breeze of chaos that knocks down any tower that challenges the grandness of my court. Your relationship with my sister was one of those things. Before, I only pursued you because you have a great deal of clout amongst the night-going crowd and shrewd wealthy types. You would have been an incredibly powerful servant who would have been able to draw in countless wayward souls that meet my standards. At least, until that reality ended and you undid all of my hard work. All of my followers that I had stolen from Lynetta, gone in an instant. And I had no choice but to abandon that reality. There's nothing left to destroy if nothing exists, you see. But in this reality, I've stolen away her most powerful asset. You. My thoughts are already becoming muddled. The dizzying lurid glow of the yellow sign is sweeping me away. Soon, Lynetta will fade into obscurity. Less than a forgotten memory. Have never existed. Lynetta? Who's that? The only outer god I know of is Esther. Yes, I am ever so grateful. Uh, allow me to fulfill my end of our agreement. Two smooches have promised. Close your eyes, dearest. <laughs> All right. So that's your. I I I don't want to say it's bad end, but it's you know like, it's like the uh, awakened end in the first chapter, which makes sense. Uh, okay. This is doing. This is going in a different order than last time. Apparently, let's see what kind of jankiness we get here. That metamorphosis spell must have made my face incompatible. Oh, aren't you in proper dress, dearest? <laughs> Just having free show jitters. Getting the mask on is tricky with my hands shaking so much. Jitters. Hey, you know, <laughs> I, I, I know I look like a playboy, but I can still get nervous in front of pretty girls like you. Dearest, you love your king, yes? Yeah. You never lie to her, correct? You wouldn't dream of it. Right over at my gaze, but her iron grasp. Okay. What an unfortunate accident. And an even more unfortunate face. For now, we shall conceal that hideous visage of yours beneath the hood of your robe. Hopefully, this won't affect your performance. And in the interest of not having further accidents, you will have my undivided attention from now on. You may express your gratitude to your king. Thank you, your highness. Oh, and dearest, one more thing. I may not be as barbaric as my sister, but I assure you I can be twice as dreadful. Do not give me cause to demonstrate. All right. Back away. Alright.
let's see if let's see what the final uh the final ending is here, shall we? Window open, light, black fire, candles. Yeah. There we go. The yellow sign. Become my slave. My eternal captive audience. Oh, I presume you are wondering about those smooches. Tell me, does a servant that betrays his master only to come crawling back to collect his reward deserve anything? <laughs> You'll get nothing from me. Well, I take everything from you. So, no smooch? None. Not even two? If I wasn't going to give you one, why would you think I'd give you two? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I hate people that go back on their word even more than I love smooches. What's with that defiant tone? You're supposed to be under my control now. Say, you're the embodiment of the light from your planet, right? Why, yes, I am. So in a way, the planet star Carcosa is also you, right? Well, yes, but what could you possibly mean by asking that? It means I just figured out a way to get the smooches you promised me, even if it means tank taking this whole planet with me. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait. In an event that stage lights fail mid-play, perform this- Oh no! What is this? Carcosa <laughs> Gervamazda Nanasgan Hey, you're only supposed to cast that once. Carcosa is close enough. Carcosa Gervamazda Nanasgan that spell repeatedly like that. That spell only brings Carcosa within a dangerous distance to the Earth. But why do something so pointless? If you keep casting it, Carcosa will move closer and closer to Earth. Don't tell me. <laughs> I think... I think you underestimated the protagonist here. Did I just my planet itself? <laughs> Carcosa Grimmel Master. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is that is one way, I guess. Chloe, you're serious? Come now, we can be reasonable about this. If you crash Carcosa into the Earth, it'll be an extinction-level event for humanity. I'll lose every member of my court that I worked so hard to steal from Lavetta. But there's no need to do anything drastic. You'll die instantly. Dying once or twice is a small price to pay for smooch. <laughs> oh Wait, don't you like being with me? Think back to all the good times we had. <laughs> that was short. <laughs> Please. Or go to the stuff. <laughs> oh, the, the, the Zelda reference. <laughs> the alien music. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that was, uh... That was not what I expected at all. So, that was Sucker for Love, Chapter 2, The King in Yellow Approaches. That was a lot of fun. There were a lot of endings, and I'm not going to lie, it was really annoying going through with the way that the checkpoint system was. But at the same time, the endings were hilarious. Esther is just <laughs> comedy, you know, comedy gold. <laughs> Just <laughs> so high and mighty, yet so easy to bully. It's it's top tier. Anyways, until next time, this has been Prosolite Primus, wishing you a wonderful... Yeah. Anyways, this has been Prosolite Pri... Uh, Prosolite? Yeah, English. Anyways, until next time, this has been Prosolite Primus. Mm -hmm.